Hi everyone, let's go over my low time frame and micro Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin, starting with the low time frame alternative bullish scenario where we are looking for a 1 2, 1 2, for then a bigger 3 towards the upside, where you really want to see volume following price towards the upside. There's a couple of reasons why this scenario for me is an alternative as written here in the box. First of all, this wave one counts a lot better as a three wave structure than a five wave structure. It is possible, but it doesn't look clean at all. Secondly, a one, two, one, two preferably creates a converging diagonal. So something like this, where the trend lines are converging to one another. But as you can clearly see, the trend lines here are diverging and not converging. So that's something you don't want to see. It is by far more common to have converging trends lines uh, trend lines like this also, the volume throughout this move towards the upside has been relatively low. You can see over here the volume of that move towards the upside. But if this is the beginning of a bigger wave three towards the upside, then where is the volume, right? You want to see the average volume kick in moving towards the upside. But actually, the volume over here is quite similar to the volume that we had in this whole corrective structure of a wave two. Then also this wave two bounced on the 886, which is a rare target for a wave two and not a common target for a wave two. And this wave two is very, very long as it is about three times longer than the length of this wave one, which is quite rare for a wave two because usually a wave two is relatively short. If we then go to my preferred scenario, which is the bearish scenario, we are looking at a corrective structure in an ABC or WXY. Doesn't really matter as the target area was the same between the one and the 1.236, which has been very, very nicely respected indeed. A little bit of a wick above to grab the liquidity for then eventually a move to the downside, which is exactly what we've been looking for. Now the 886 is a common target for a wave X or a wave B, so very nicely respected for then this move towards the upside. If we then look at what is happening on the micro time frame, which I'll go to in a second, it basically provides two potential scenarios at the moment for the low time frame scenario. So first of all, if this over here is the low of wave A, and let's actually go to the one hour. So if the low of wave A is already in, in then a potential ABC, then if this is a three wave structure, then a potential scenario that you might get, which I think is interesting, is an expanding flat with a three, three and then a five wave move to the downside where I think that the target area that we have above which is sitting between 28.9k and 29.2k can be a very very interesting target for then the potential wave B over here for then eventually a wave C to the downside however if price is going to create another low I might be looking at a five wave move to the downside and if this then is a five wave impulsive structure to the downside in the yellow wave over here we're looking at potentially a five three five wave zigzag move or a bigger move towards the downside and then a wave one two and then a bigger three towards the downside so that is of course yet to be seen based on what is going to happen very very locally if we then do go to the micro time frames then the first one over here is the potential zigzag scenario where we then have a wave a over here followed by a three wave in B and then a one, two, three, four, five wave move in this wave C, which ended right above the rare target for a wave C, which is the 1.618. Now, the more common target for the wave C is actually over here between the one and the 1.236. However, as you can see, price clearly went below and almost hit the 1.618. You don't often see a wave C getting this close to the 1.618. So this might be a reason why this between the two micros that I have might be an alternative scenario and not the preferred scenario, where then the potential preferred scenario is this being a wave one, then a wave two, then we have a one, two, three, four, five, and then potentially this wave three, another wave sideways structure in a four, and then another five to the downside, where I think this target box down here is going to be quite interesting between 26.2k and 26.3k. So if price is going to fall to the downside, this target area is going to be one to look for. And if, of course, price continues to the downside, well, we'll wait and see, of course. For the ones asking about a potential five wave structure over here in this wave one, because yeah, it does look very like three wave ish, but you never know, it can also be a five wave structure. I basically asked John in Discord, our basically like low time frame counter on the one, three, five minute stuff, um, to say, yo, do you have any counts of that like structure? And he came up with this. So this is the structure at the beginning of the move towards the downside, where you can see he currently labeled it as an A, but of course it can be a wave one as well. It's simply a five five wave structure where this is the one minute guys one minute counting where you then have a in, in between the brackets you have a wave one two 
then a wave three, a sideways four, and then a wave five. So yes, it is possible to come up with a five wave count over here. Of course, it's not the cleanest impulse we've seen in the world, but nonetheless, it is possible to come up with a five wave count. And you always have to think, especially seeing the price action over here, that this can potentially be a five wave structure, because of course, this looks quite impulsive to the downside, and potentially we get some more downside, depending on what price is gonna do over here. If we then look at the CVD divergences, this is very, very important. I've been repeating it in a couple of videos now because yeah, we do have some bullish divergences over here where the target is then the high at 28.5K. However, local CVD always gets priority. And yeah, I had a cut in the video because I wanted to include this because what is happening from a CVD standpoint is super interesting to tell you. So sorry for the small delay in the video coming online, but on the 15 minute over here, lower high on price, higher high on the yellow CVD, right? So before this pump happened bearish cvd divergences and still with this pump bearish cvd divergences lower high on price higher high on the yellow line but if we then have a little look closer and remember the color the yellow line over here what happened even more locally is that we started to create bullish divergences with that same yellow line so over here a higher low on price lower low on the yellow cvd which is a bullish divergence so first the yellow line shows bearish on the 15 but then more locally it starts to create bullish CVD divergences. Now, these bullish divergences means that the target is this high over here. But before we reached this high, we started to create bearish CVD divergences. So yeah, the five minute can be very, very confusing. But over here, we then have a lower highs on price, but then a higher high on both the yellow and the blue CVD line, creating bearish divergences with the target being these lows. Now, price moved to the downside took the lows over here so the bearish CVD played out and which one is remaining the bullish CVD divergence is still there higher low on price but the lower low on the yellow uh, CVD line over here so even though the 50 minute showed bearish CVD divergences when price was ranging over here on the five minute the more local and recent price action started to show bullish CVD divergences and therefore these get priority because this is more recent price action for now at least this pump towards the upside of course as long as this high is not taken we still have a 15 minute bearish cvd divergences but whatever you do of course more locally for potential trading setups you need proof of support and cvd can be a great proof of support for potential entries in certain trades i hope this video was helpful or valuable to you please check out the most recent educational update i've done about in my opinion the best trading indicator that you can use which is the cvd as i've shown you just now thanks for watching this video and subscribing and i will see you at the next one bye bye